Welcome. In the show tonight, we discuss the road to the ANC elective conference, which many South Africans regard as a game changer of our public state of affairs. Former editor and analyst currently with the University of Pretoria, Mr. Mpumelelo Mkabela, will be sharing thoughts with us on this matter. And later, we'll be joined by author and life coach, Dr. Helena Dolny, who will be talking about how to overcome the fear of death and to plan for your final moments accordingly. She wrote the book titled Before, Forever, After. But first, the governing party ANC has had a rough year with the structures of the organization taking their party to the courts and some members calling for their leaders to step down. The year has been characterized by cabinet reshuffles, allegations of state capture, corruption, and many calls for President Jacob Zuma to step down. Many say Zuma should long have stepped down as he is a liability for the party and the state but his defenders say he's on the right path to transform the country. Mr. Mpumelelo Mkabela is with me. Good evening to you and welcome. Good evening, Tim. Pleasure to have you with us. Now, firstly, let's talk about Zimbabwe because it's the current story now. Wh yeah. what, what do you think when you look at the developments there? There's already talk that the fired deputy <coughs> president or vice president, Emerson Nagagwa, mm -hmm. may be installed as the new leader of Zimbabwe tomorrow. Well, I think what is happening in Zimbabwe actually um, gives South Africa good lessons on how not to govern a country. Where you have a situation where the governing party has so dominated the Zimbabwean politics to the point that what matters, um, uh, what determines the future of the country is not so much whether or not there's going to be a different party after an election, but <coughs> the extent to which um, the, 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 the there are fights within the governing party itself. And what has happened, very interesting enough, in my opinion, is that recently there has been state capture uh, in Zimbabwe, where the, 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 the first lady, Grace Mugabe, who is not a, a, a member of, of, of government, not a member of parliament, not a cabinet minister, he, she's a civilian, but she has been seen to be running a parallel structure of government mm. to the point that she determines the appointments of cabinet ministers, uh, things like that. So she had, in a way, captured an element of government. Now, the army could not tolerate that. Um, they decided to now say, we're going to intervene, as they put it, to remove the criminals around uh, President Mugabe. Mm. These are not normal criminals, as they call them. Mm. These are people who are running government. And, and people who have undue influence on government, uh, in the meantime, not being pol politically elected and not being... Uh, and enjoying the appropriate status to be participating in affairs of the government. Indeed, which makes it a typical state capture uh, a scenario. Now let's come back home because, you know, the main point of us having the discussion is the fact that there are so many candidates vying for the position of president of the ANC, and that's a very important position because it tells us which direction the country is likely to take, and we take an active interest in that. There are so many candidates. Do you think all of them count, or it's only two that count? Well, to be honest, only two count. Um, mm. But the others are important to the extent that they bring color in the, car, in the, in the contest. Yes. Um, the ANC has for, very, for many years shunned the idea that people should contest openly. For the first time uh, this tr this, this in this round of a, a elective conference, you're having people coming up, even have slogans. I mean, Linda Wasusul, for example, has a campaign slogan. Typical American type election. Mm. It's a must. Mm. And she's got her own branding. And all of them have got different branding mm. things. To a certain extent, it has to be welcome. It brings color in the contest, in the elective conference of the, of the ANC. But, Tim, the sad part of it is that it's a contest without ideas. It's just colorful, different candidates. But if you look at what exactly are they bringing on the table, there's no original idea. No. What, what do you mean there are no ideas? I mean, what, what did you expect? One could argue and say well, they operate within the ideas of the ANC if there is such a thing. And that's precisely the problem because if you say to one of the candidates, what are your policies on this and that? They say, no, I'm policy, the policy of the ANC. But we know from the experiences of, uh, for example, having President Nelson Mandela as our president, Tabo Mbeki and Jacob Zuma himself now, that actually the influence of the leader is very important, mm. regardless of, the, of what policies pertains in the, in the party. The leader actually sets the tone. The leader can actually implement certain ideas. He may have different interpretations of the policies of the organization. That's why uh, uh, President Nelson Mandela's uh, president was different. 
uh, and, and Tawumbeg was also different, and Zuma totally different. But Zuma will tell you that he's implementing the policies of the ANC. So I would like to have these many candidates of the ANC telling us what's going to be their interpretation of the ANC policies and what would make it dif what would be their presidency dif be different compared to the others. That's what is lacking at the moment. So you're having people saying the same thing every day. It's very stale, no debate. Yes, of course, there's too many T-shirts flying around, nice colors, but, nice... But, you know, Pumela, notwithstanding that, the divisions from where I'm sitting seem very stark and sharp. Yeah. If you look at what Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa says he stands for, yeah. and on the other hand, talking about Dr. Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma, people perceive her to be a continuation of the current situation yeah. uh, uh, under the leadership of uh, President Zuma. Cyril Ramaphosa saying his anti-state capture, corruption, and so forth, and the new deal that he spoke about recently. And so people think that these are two different uh, contestations and they represent two different um, interests. If you reduce it to the contest of the two, we can actually try and make up whether there are differences. And the differences can be determined by looking at who is campaigning for who. So if you look at the people that are campaigning for Nkosa and and um, look at the slate that uh, she's heading, then we can actually make conclusions about whether or not she's more likely to be strong or not strong on corruption. And if you look at what Cyril Ramaphosa, the people that are supporting him and the slate, and then we can actually make up and say and, and interpret it to say this mm. means that uh, this is the direction he's likely uh, to move. But you don't get a sense, Ramaphosa doesn't come in and say, I, as still Ramaphosa, if I become president, this is what I'm going to do. It's all made up as in the context of the ANC must mm. do the following, the mm. ANC must do the following. I think it's time people must admit to say, she must say, I, as in Kosa Zanatlaminizum, I don't believe in state capture. I think it's a fake, as President Jacob Zuma yeah. said. And then uh, Cyril Ramaphosa must say, I, as Cyril Ramaphosa, believe that state capture is a reality. And I think we must tackle it in this way. Yes. Here's my w w which is very confusing as opposed to ordinary citizens, right, yeah. who are watching all of this, uh, this drama unfold. Yeah. And then we ask ourselves, what is the influence of uh, President Jacob Zuma on the unfolding saga? It's less than a month to go before a new leader of the ANC is elected. And, and that in itself has got implications anyway beyond the conference. So what is the influence of the current government under President Zuma on the elective conference? It's a big influence that is uh, wielding. Uh, we see it in the following manner. One, he has endorsed Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma as his preferred uh, candidate to lead the ANC in, from December. Two, he has done um, uh, everything he possibly could to try and influence a key structure in Guazulu Natal to support Nkosa Zanatlamini Zuma. For example, there was a court case that uh, uh, the outcome of which said that actually the PEC, the Provincial Executive Committee in Guazulu Natal, um, was elected not in a manner in accordance with the mm. ANC policies, mm. right? So, which basically means that it has to be set aside, as well as other decisions taken at that conference. Zuma has gone to the NEC of the ANC to argue that uh, there must be an appeal to try and do, you know, mm. he, he has acted mm. in a manner that seeks to endorse that which has been ruled by the court to be invalid. Mm. So mm. all in the way of trying to help Nkosa Zanazuma to be strong in that province, to get more support. So, and, uh, and we know that his people, uh, Zuma's faction, has all they've been trying to say the Eastern Cape Conference, however, uh, has to be disbanded or something has to happen against those yeah. ones because we know mm. that they don't support Nkosa Zanazuma. So he's been trying to wield those but kinds of influences. In now. As I indicated, it's less than a month to go before, yeah. before the election of a new leader, right? Yeah. And he goes to the conference as what? A lame duck president, a weakened person, or is he still an influential force within the ANC politics? And as I said, you know, mm -hmm. beyond the conference, he remains the state president. He remains the president of the country. What's going to happen to him? Well, he's influential as we speak uh, in a sense that he's part of the factions. He's actively involved in the factionalism of the ANC, backing this horse against the other. And whenever he gets an opportunity, he will try and uh, criticize the other party directly or indirectly. And the next thing that's going to happen is that at the conference, uh, his candidate may win or may lose. If his candidate wins, his influence will continue. And that influence will be direct and will be indirect. The direct influence will come in a sense that there's a lot of cases that are pending against him. 
So he will need support from that president, uh, both in terms of signing off the legal mm. bills that he's busy uh, accumulating, and secondly, he will also need assistance in terms of all of his friends, because he's President Jacob Zuma is involved in a lot of alleged criminality, and but he's not alone. There are other people that that, he, that are participating in that. So all of them will need support. There will be too much pressure on his new, uh, newly elected uh, president who is aligned to him to pay back, kind of thing. To say, mm. you know, we supported you, pay us back, protect us from prosecution, do this and that. So they have a lot of things to to sort out. But if his candidate doesn't win, the Cyril Ramaphosa camp emerges victorious. Then that's the end of his uh, 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 influence uh, to a large extent. Because what will happen then is that he and all of the people that he has surrounded himself with, who are involved in alleged criminality, are likely to be prosecuted. No one is going to stand in the way. Um, it will be a matter between them and the court. There will be no political maneuver to block any prosecution mm. or investigation. So that's what's going to happen. Well. Pumelelo, thank you very much for talking to us, and uh, we appreciate your analysis of the road to the elective conference of the ANC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. And there you have it, and uh, you know, it's probably more of importance to President Zuma, this elective conference, if I understood you correctly. But then again, we will be picking up the pieces every week and looking at various angles of the story. The conference is happening in December of 2017.